Welcome to Bruce's Two Minute Primer on Musical Form, Episode 6, What is a Cadenza? A cadenza is a loose term for pretty much any short, somewhat rhythmically free solo performed by a single musician or maybe a small group of musicians during a larger work. The earliest cadenzas were performed by singers who would have a short vocal flourish near the end of an aria or soloistic work. These were intended as a place for the soloist to show off their virtuosic technique. Traditionally, they would be performed in one breath, so that kept them from going on too long. But over time, breaths gradually crept in, lengthening the cadenza. This type of cadenza found its way into instrumental works as well, where the most commonly heard example of a cadenza is in a concerto. In the most typical occurrence, right near the end, the orchestra stops after a long and loud, unresolved chord, and then the soloist has the opportunity to shine all by themselves, performing impressive technical passages that are inspired by the melodies in the concerto. These usually last anywhere from 30 seconds to two to three minutes or more before the orchestra comes back in, usually with one final statement of the main theme and the work comes to an end. In that sense, the cadenza can often be seen as a warning, get ready, it's almost over. Thank God! Traditionally, cadenzas would be improvised, made up on the spot during a performance, and many performers, often the composers themselves, did improvise. But over time, composers and performers planned what they would play in advance more and more, and even published their own original cadenzas, sometimes for their own works and sometimes for other composers' works that performers could use. Today, it's quite rare for a performer to genuinely improvise during their cadenzas. Sometimes cadenzas appear in more than just the last movement, most commonly with an addition to the first movement. Still, they usually would occur near the end in that it's almost done moment. But cadenzas also occur in unusual places. Tchaikovsky famously has a long cadenza early in his first piano concerto. Beethoven begins his emperor piano concerto with a big cadenza accompanied by just a few big chords in the orchestra. And one of the most famous other examples is by Rimsky-Korsakov. His music has lots of cadenzas for a variety of instruments, but the best known is probably a series of short, rhythmically free cadenzas written for the concertmaster. These show up in all four movements of his symphonic tone poem, Scheherazade, where the concertmaster is meant to represent the title character herself. Nowadays, cadenzas can show up anywhere. The most extreme example of this in contemporary music is usually found in jazz, where free-form cadenzas can last eight minutes or more in some masterful performances. But in most music, even today, cadenzas are usually written out pretty specifically, but there is still an element of freedom, usually in that the rhythm is somewhat loose and up to the taste of the performers. And that is a short description of what we call a cadenza.